Hey guys, I know I'm a few days late on this, but I'm going to do my record store day haul. I've got it split into three parts in this video. I'm going to do my record store day items. I'm going to do the used items and other items I picked up at the record store on that day. And then I'm also going to uh, unbox and take a first look at the uh, Vinyl Me Please Essentials album that actually arrived at my door on record store day. So I'm gonna start off first with this year's record store day bag. I think it's got a pretty cool looking design on it. Turntable and it says 12th anniversary. A little, I'm not entirely sure what that is. What kind of animal? Uh, I had two, I gave one to a buddy. I didn't need two of the bags. Uh, I gave him a couple of the items that I had gotten as well. And kept a few for myself. I got this Robert Plant like trading card with a little couple like quotes on the back. I had given him one of the CDs that I had uh, gotten in there. I also had gotten a copy of the Into the uh, Spider Verse soundtrack, which is actually a really good soundtrack. I'm not huge on rap music a lot of the time, but it really fit the movie really well which I actually saw for the first time a couple weeks ago. The, this year's Record Store Day sampler. I'll show you the track listing on the back real quick. I also had gotten a hold of an MC5 Total Assault button, which will probably end up going on my guitar strap. A Record Store Day guitar pick, which says Diodario on the back. Which is a guitar pick and string company. And I also got thrown in one of the bags, Eagles Hotel California matches. And I grabbed a couple stickers from one of the record stores for free, which is Omega Music, which is in Dayton, Ohio. That's it for the freebies. We'll go into the Record Store Day items next. I picked these up at a couple different stores, Omega Music in Dayton, Ohio, and Toxic Beauty Records in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I ended up picking up first from Omega. I got the Crow soundtrack, which I haven't had a chance to open yet. It's, uh, let you take a look at the track listing here. Uh, one of my favorite soundtracks. So I was really happy for them to get a release of this finally. Let's open it because it is on colored vinyl and it has an etching on one of the sides, which anyone that's probably been looking into this soundtrack for Record Store Day probably has seen the etching, which is of a crow, which I think is really a cool looking etching. I've got a few albums with etching on them. Let's take a look here. Got a gatefold. Some pictures from the movie. Rest in peace, Brandon Lee, who uh, died in the making of this movie. There's a lot of good songs on here. There's uh, Central Pie That's Big Empty, which was originally on the soundtrack and then later put on their album, I believe it was Purple. Uh, Nine Inch Nails covering Dead Souls, which was a Joy Division song. Rage Against the Machine doing a version of one of their older songs. Uh, I think it was them. Um, there's Pantera on here doing a cover. Uh, the Cure doing their song Burn, which is only available on this as far as I know. Absolutely incredible song, might be my favorite Cure song. On sides A and B, it's just traditional white vinyl. Well, sorry, just solid white vinyl. Let me get this back in here. And then on side C and D, if I can get, get it out of the package. Side C, just traditional black. Side D, I'll try and get in here. Looks like we can get it 
which is the crow image from the front of the soundtrack. Initially, I didn't know that there was going to be an etching, so I was wondering why there was only three sides. I also picked up from Omega, I had gotten Jeff Buckley in translation, which is, far, as far as I know, just a solid black vinyl. Just some other uh, studio cuts from uh, the Grace era, some being uh, songs that were re-recorded and put on the album, like Mojo Pin and Unforgiven, which was later retitled Last Goodbye. Then there's, and Hallelujah is on here, and then some, you know, there's some covers and everything on here. A little uh, part on here I'll show real quick. I'm going to read. It says, in translation, or in transition, sorry. That's a term that describes Jeff Buckley's state of mind, his music, and his entire life. His musical curiosity had been in constant motion from the time he had decided to be a musician around the age of 13, and in the fertile artistic soil of 90s Greenwich Village and downtown cultures, Jeff was in his idea of heaven. In these tracks, we hear a few selections from the treasure trove, heretofore unreleased and also known as the Adabo Sessions. He's singing from handwritten lyrics thrown in a three-ring binder, joking with the Steves, Adabo, and Berkowitz, flipping through a hobo's stew of favorite old cover songs and ones he's been woodshedding as his own attempts at songwriting. Jeff's favorite moments, other than those spent in front of his audiences, were spent in record stores. This selection from those sessions was made specifically to celebrate Record Store Day 2019 as a tribute to the hearty souls whose love for music and the artists they support keep them opening their doors and putting music in the hands of music lovers all over the world. If he were here, he'd send his love and a visit and visit a bunch of you. This will have to stand in his stead. Mary. Mary was his mother. Yep, and then it looks like it's just traditional black with the Columbia Center. And then what? thing I picked up there's also a download code in here but the last thing I picked up from Omega was the Ben Gibber me and Magdalena and the concept seven inch which I didn't realize was numbered until after I'd gotten home which let's see if it can pick up on here yep number 861 on here is uh as it says on here fuck yep Foundation is a seven inch record series created in loving memory of Richard Swift. 100% of the net proceeds from the sales of this seven inch go to the Swift family, Music Cares, and Music Support UK. And that was a friend that I know of uh, some of them. I believe he had also toured with the Black Keys and the Arcs. And I think he also did some work with the Shens as well. Me and Magdalena was a song that was written by Ben Gibbard, most known from Death Cab for Cutie for uh, the Monkees, for a release they did a few years back. And there's also on here the concept, it was a special version of it, which he did on Bandwagon-esque, which was Teenage Fan Club. I've got it on here. He covered the album in its entirety for Turntable Kitchen. Uh, sounds delicious. And it was an album that he had loved, so he did like pretty much everything on it entirely. It's just another alternate version of that song. Then I went to Toxic and picked up Weezer, Dusty Gems, and Raw Nuggets. Haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. Honestly, I probably should have given the songs a full listen on Spotify before picking up the album. They are B-sides, live versions, and like demos from the Blue Album. Picture of the band in that era. And some liner notes. And I had already opened it the other day to just to take a look at it because I've got the MoFi version of the Blue Album, which unfortunately my version is not on marble. This one, I'm not sure if it'll pick up on here. You can see it a little bit. The mar Blue Marble. And the last thing I picked up, which 
I had talked myself out of originally was the Bob Dylan Blood on the Tracks test pressing, <coughs> which was the New York release of the songs. They were done on a test pressing and it ended up not getting the, an official full release. He went back and re-recorded some, some of the songs in Minneapolis, which made it onto the regular album. There's some different song lyrics on here and such, like on Tangled Up in Blue has different lyrics. That's the first one that comes to mind for sure for me on here. There's not really much to see. It's traditional black vinyl on this. And a white sleeve. And it just has the test pressing label in the center. So that was the record store I pickups. Then we've got my pickups that I had gotten at the record store, but they were not like record store exclusives. <coughs> Omega did a canned food drive where you bring in a canned food and you get a spin on the wheel. I got a free seven inch. I didn't know a lot of the artists on there, so I ended up just picking up the revivalists. It's got Shoot You Down from the upcoming new release, Take Good Care, available November 9th. So this was gonna end up being two songs from that, their, well, now newest album on this cool orange vinyl. The two songs being Side A is Shoot You Down and Side B is You and I. I actually end up enjoying the seven inch. Surprisingly, I don't know a lot by them, but I figured I'd give it a listen because it's only two songs. And then I also got a chance to pick up the Basement Tapes by Bob Dylan. That's one of the albums where the band backs, it's his backing band. I picked up Songwriter by Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson, two of country's best songwriters. And it's also got <coughs> two of the members of the uh, Highwaymen. I picked up another Willie Nelson album. The Sound in Your Mind. On this album, it has uh, a medley of some of his songs with Crazy being on there, which is more famous by Patsy Cline, with, but it was written by Willie. There's really nothing special about the uh, inner sleeves or anything. Let me check the Dylan. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Nope, just solid. The regular white sleeves and the last thing I'm going to look at is the Loretta Lynn Coal Miner's Daughter release which that's I opened that up here for the first time we got this cool picture of Loretta Lynn it says original artwork by John Vogel illustrator based in Denver Colorado and this information is on here if you like his work. Then we have the inner, like, sleep, the uh, bind here. The Daughter's Margarita, two ounces of honey or agave, an ounce of limeade concentrate, an ounce of fresh lime juice, half ounce of grapefruit juice, two drops of almond extract, optional, a quarter teaspoon of Orange bitters, three quarters of a cup of ice, one tablespoon of flake salt, and a half teaspoon of chili powder and lime for garnish. And then the album itself, I like the uh, embossed look of the actual of her name and the album on there, and the actual the back cover of the album. And it is on this really gorgeous blue color. It's kind of marbled. I don't think it's really going to pick up well on camera, but it looks good in person. I'm really happy to have this in my collection. The red is one of the best that uh, vocalist that country music's ever had. And not only that, but this particular album was also made into a book and a movie. So it's a pretty legendary album in that sense. It's, uh, I think they said it hadn't been in print since 81, so it's actually quite surprising. But I feel like, you know, I've picked up a good amount of stuff. 
this weekend. I've almost picked up the Teal album and almost picked up the uh, Pearl Jam album, but the Pearl Jam I passed on because it said it was a record story at first. Uh, what all did you guys get? Let me know and let me uh, know what your favorite things that you've picked up turned out to be, whether they were record store day exclusives or just other albums you picked up lately. Hope you all have a great day.